Okay, so welcome, good morning. <laughs> I'm happy that you came here and let's do some kind of accounting. So I've counted that there are uh, 10 seats in each, uh, uh, or actually 20 seats in each row. Uh, then there are uh, 10 rows. So this room hosts about 200 people. I would say it's 50% uh, um, uh, occupied, so uh, not, uh, not all seats are used. Um, and if you all paid on average uh, 100 euros to get to this, uh, uh, this uh, event, uh, then this would be a revenue of 10,000 uh, euros uh, to organize this event. Of course, we have to count the sponsors, uh, but we can easily um, think about the business case that, uh, that this conference has. You know, how much does it cost to organize a conference like this? What are the costs and so on? And I do this all the time. It's kind of like an OCD thing for me. I go to an airplane, I count the seats. I say, okay, what's the average price of the ticket? Oh, okay, so one ride of an airplane costs this much. Um, I was thinking uh, uh, if people are doing this to me because I'm a merchant, I accept cryptocurrencies and I was, uh, I'm very uh, cautious about things. So for example, if I accept on-chain Bitcoin, uh, what I would do is I would uh, spend each UTXO, each, uh, each payment separately. So my customers don't meet in a transaction. So one customer doesn't uh, check, you know, what is the balance of the other customer and so on. So I've, I've been doing this for many years, uh, but with Monero, it was like, oh yeah, it's private. You know, <laughs> I don't, I don't have to deal with this. It's like uh, privacy is uh, what Monero is about. Um, and a few months ago, I was buying uh, something from a, from a merchant um, that accepted Monero. So, of course, I chose Monero uh, to pay for the service. Um, and uh, uh, the merchant accepted uh, Bitcoin, Litecoin, Ethereum and Monero. So, uh, with Bitcoin, Litecoin and Ethereum, I just looked at the blockchain and I saw, okay, so I did this calculation, you know, how many people paid how much and, okay, I see, is this a successful business? Um, it was uh, very interesting for me because they, they were doing something similar uh, to me, uh, at least in the genre, not in the content. Um, but I was like, okay, but what if half of the customers paid in Monero? Then I wouldn't know uh, the exact number. Uh, so I started thinking, okay, I need to figure this out. Uh, so this is a very simple thing. It's uh, not anything revolutionary. It has been uh, known for a long time. Uh, but let's, uh, let's see how you can actually do it in practice and estimate the turnover of the merchant. So um, I have some as assumptions. So a merchant accepts Monero for purchases. Um, my assumption is they end up in the same wallet, which uh, in the case of this merchant is they were using a static address and, uh, um, uh, and uh, ask the customer to provide a, a hash of the transaction, the transaction ID, um, which uh, is a little bit more secure than in, uh, in Bitcoin because uh, of styled addresses. So, uh, in, in Bitcoin, you would just, you know, see, oh, the merchant uh, got paid to this address and you can see the uh, TXID from the block explorer. Or you use something like BTC pay server with uh, Monero plugin and uh, that generates sub addresses, uh, but they, they all end up in the same wallet. So it works with both cases. Um, I want to estimate the, uh, the uh, turnover, so so the revenue of the of the merchant. Uh, of course, uh, we don't see amounts, uh, but if they use other cryptocurrencies, it is quite easy to estimate. Okay, I look at Bitcoin, Ethereum, uh, Litecoin uh, uh, transaction. I I estimate the average order size. Again, it could be different for people who pay with Monero. Maybe they have some different customer behavior, but uh, in general, it is quite uh, a safe uh, 
assumption. Uh, in this case, it was much easier because the pro it was only one product for the for the same price for everyone. So every order is exactly the same price. Um, for example, if it's a, like a paid newsletter subscription, access to an online course or an ebook, uh, you can say you can see okay, so th this person um, earns this much per order. Um, uh, Monero wallets usually don't either allow coin control or if they allow, most people don't use coin control. How many of you use coin control with Monero transactions? Perfect, we have two heroes. <laughs> so uh, with Bitcoin, we kind of assume we need to do it and uh, and we do it all the time. You know, I, I was saying I'm uh, I'm like, I'm uh, spending it per coin. I make sure the customers don't meet in a single transaction. I swap it out um, uh, to some other network. Uh, in my case, usually Lightning. Um, uh, but Monero merchants usually, uh, the, it ends up in the same wallet and they sweep from time to time. And uh, that's what allows the attack. Uh, so, uh, Usually uh, what merchants uh, would do is they would uh, take the funds and either uh, send the balance to some other wallet. So for example, if you have like a, a payment gateway, uh, either yours or third party. Uh, so if it's yours, it might be a BTC pay server. You would, uh, uh, you would want to uh, take the money out uh, of there, maybe uh, to a hardware wallet. Maybe it is a hardware wallet, but maybe you want to send it somewhere else. Uh, one of the reasons is because of sub addresses, you need quite a, uh, uh, quite a high look ahead because there might be many uh, people who go to the checkout page, but they don't pay. So uh, you can't really receive, if you are generating sub addresses, um, into like a normal wallet that you use daily because it uh, uh, you need to uh, uh, you need to scan for more sub addresses. Um, so many people do this. Of course, they can also spend the coins. Uh, that will tell you something. Maybe it will not tell you uh, uh, such good numbers, but you also will see a minimum. So you you could uh, safely assume that the turnover is uh, this amount or more. Uh, the sweep transaction will be usually more inputs, so that's uh, uh, that's what stands out on the chain. Um, but it doesn't have to be, but uh, 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 but it can be. So um, let's see. So what what we can do is we can send multiple payments to the merchant. For example, we uh, uh, we split the one payment into two outputs. Um, and uh, it arrives in a single transaction. So actually the merchant even sees that it is, uh, uh, it is, um, uh, it is one transaction. They will see in their wallet that they received the amount uh, uh, that they were expecting. So it's nothing suspicious, only if you look at the transaction. But uh, wallet usually tell you received $100 or one Monero or something like this. Um, another thing is you can you can spray the address or sub addresses if you can if you can go to uh, the the uh, if you can create multiple orders um, and you can uh, you can send sm some small uh, amounts of XMR to uh, a single address um, so or create one or more fake orders and and do it like this so. Um, now the, the assumption is uh, that uh, the merchant is going to spend uh, this money uh, from uh, uh, in uh, one transaction. So they will use both uh, uh, both of these outputs uh, in uh, rings in some transaction. Um, so. Um, uh, of course, this uh, gives us um, uh, basically an assumption over a certain period of time, maybe between the first uh, transaction and, uh, and the last one. Um, uh, but uh, we can continue doing this if we see, okay, uh, the merchant uh, swept all the coins, we can do the attack again. 
and then estimate uh, uh, per time, like let's say per week or uh, depending on how often they sweep the funds, um, what is the turnover. So, uh, so let's, uh, let's see uh, how, uh, how to do this. Uh, so this is uh, a real world use case. I'm uh, de-anonymizing my transaction, but uh, I churned the coins later quite nicely. So I'm not worried about <laughs> disclosing these to you. Um, so there was one transaction. There's, uh, there's one un output, uh, second transaction, second output. Uh, both outputs are uh, number zero. So, so um, the first output of the transaction. So this is what I sent to the merchant. So how do I actually uh, get uh, the sweeping transaction from the blockchain? Um, so uh, unfortunately, uh, no block explorer that I found, maybe you can help me and it would make it much easier, but there is no open source uh, uh, Monero blockchain explorer or open access uh, Monero blockchain explorer that can search uh, using the outputs. Uh, so um, we need to um, uh, we need to write a little bit of code. Uh, this is just a gist on my um, on my GitHub, so you can do it yourself. It's very simple, so don't worry. It's just uh, change some uh, parameters. So first of all, we know the block height of uh, our transaction, so we don't have to search the whole blockchain. We know um, when to start. Uh, and uh, so it has to be 10 blocks after the second transaction ha happened. That's when uh, coins could actually be spent. Um, so um, another thing is that uh, in Monero, uh, you don't identify uh, the output uh, by, uh, by this uh, hexa string, but you um, identify it by uh, indices. So, um, Indices are just numbered outputs uh, in the in the chain. Uh, so first, you need to convert the uh, the hexa string into into uh, index. Uh, so that's there's a little code for that. Uh, by the way, I never used uh, uh, any Monero API. I wanted uh, ChatGPT to write the code for me, and I wasted two, one hour of my life uh, because it was hallucinating APIs, APIs that would be very useful, but they don't exist. <laughs> so uh, okay, uh, so that, then you can then you can see if it's the right transaction. You can com compare. Um, the the um, the key uh, the st stealth public key and and the index. Um, then one more thing: uh, the output indices are relative, so you need to uh, you need to add uh, the numbers. Uh, they're ordered by uh, ordered by uh, well index or or time. Uh, so you need to convert uh, these. Uh, relative indices uh, in the in the transaction to uh, to absolute ones and then uh, basically I wrote this uh, short code that will uh, that will uh, go through the chain and see uh, where um, uh, where uh, there is a transaction that contains the uh, the ring members so these these are the uh, indices the uh, the can I Actually, use this one. Yes. Uh, so th these are the indices. This is the mean height, and I, then I just very slowly go through whatever one week of transactions, um, and I s I want to find one transaction uh, that has uh, both of these uh, outputs as a member of the rings uh, 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 in uh, uh, used as uh, input. So I ran it. Um, so it it doesn't uh, only display the uh, the transactions that have uh, both of them. So basically, uh, this transaction I I see has both of them. These other ones are useless. Uh, uh, but this one is a is a good uh, candidate. So we can check it out. Uh, we can see uh, when it was mined. This is um, uh, very important for the. 
um, estimation of time because we want revenue over time. We want to know if it's like uh, for three days or for um, a week or for a month, uh, something like that. Uh, we verify that the outputs are actually um, uh, used uh, in the in the rings. Uh, uh, of course, uh, it could be a coincidence. Uh, to reduce the uh, chance of coincidence, you can uh, do more than two. You can uh, do five, and then it's uh, definitely not a coincidence. Uh, so this is very likely that this is the sweeping transaction of the merchant. Um, so what does it say? Uh, it has four inputs. I know that two of them are mine, but I'm a customer, so I <laughs> count myself as well. Uh, I know uh, when it was mined. Um, uh, what's the time of our oldest output? Um, and uh, uh, we get a rough estimate of, uh, of uh, three orders. Um, and it looks like a sweep for a day. So it's, uh, it's one day. The merchant actually confirmed my or order uh, two hours after sweeping the transaction. So it's a good estimate that this merchant uh, has, uh, in this case, around three orders per day. Of course, I can repeat this because there are better and worse days. If, if it's nice weather somewhere, maybe people don't uh, buy stuff for Monero and go outside. Um, so... Now we do the same assumption as I did in the beginning. The pro product costs, let's say, 100. So the turnover for the merchant is around 300 for the day. I uh, also include uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Litecoin, which I just see in the Block Explorer. I don't have to do anything. And we can, we can uh, repeat this. So um, it needs an active attack. So, uh, uh, in contrast to a public blockchain, you need to actively do something, and uh, um, uh, it's it's not just a matter of looking um, on chain. You you need to be an active attacker, uh, which is uh, uh, quite good because. Uh, uh, you cannot go to a chain analysis company and tell them, oh, you, you know, I need to know what happened one year ago. Um, but on the other hand, uh, I realized even on, on my experience that uh, Monero is not this magic, nothing is on, seen on chain technology that you can just whatever you say, oh, it's Monero, I don't have to care about it. Um, uh, because if this information is something that you don't want uh, to make public, maybe uh, to the state, more likely to competition, uh, then, uh, then it might be a problem. So how do other coins compare and what you can do? And then I'll say what you can do with Monero. So uh, with uh, um, blockchain-based uh, non-private uh, coins, uh, you need co coin control, uh, BTC pay server, which is a good merchant solution, uh, allows this directly from BTC and LTC. You just uh, use the, uh, the interface of BTC pay server and you can select coins and you can spend them in random times uh, and per UTXO maybe do a lightning swap or a swap to Monero or to some uh, mixing or privacy service. Um, Lightning is actually great by default. Uh, it also needs an active attack. Uh, so you cannot uh, learn about the transactions from the past. Uh, uh, some network-wide attackers could still uh, correlate recipient keys, uh, uh, especially if they run, of course, custodial wallets, uh, um, wall wallets that outsource routing. So for example, the difference between Phoenix and Breeze is uh, Breeze is doing the routing on the phone. Uh, it uh, creates uh, the route, uh, talks directly to the nodes, and when the uh, when the route is created, it pays uh, the payment. Um, so Breeze, as an operator, sees that there is a transaction going through, but they don't see uh, who's the recipient. With Phoenix, it just says, "Oh, I want to pay this invoice. Please find me a route," and then uh, then it just clears. So. Um, in this case, what you can do, there is a project called LN Proxy, uh, which creates uh, um, 
uh, just a random note key that you pay to, uh, and uh, this invoice will be paid only uh, only when the original invoice is cleared. So no one uh, no one actually sees this. Um, uh, what can you do in Monero? Uh, of course, coin control is good. Uh, if uh, the attacker just sprays the address with small amounts, you can just uh, take the small amounts and send them to whatever, Monero Development Fund or Tor Foundation or whoever uh, you want. Um, uh, if, you see, uh, if you see two outputs uh, that are from the same transaction, you can sweep both of them uh, because you know that they probably uh, belong, uh, they, they were sent by the sa same person. Um, and then uh, what is good is when you are doing the sweep, do it uh, per two outputs. Because the problem here was that uh, why this transaction stood out is because it had uh, four inputs. So if you take two and two uh, all the time, then, uh, then it will break because uh, it will be included uh, in this output and there are many uh, transactions that just by chance include uh, the output. So this, that would not uh, tell the attacker anything useful. Uh, so if you cannot use uh, coin control, but Feather wallet, wallet does it and it, it works quite nicely. But if you cannot do, then the best other thing is sweep often. So when you receive a, um, receive a new order, new order payment, just send it out and don't wait until um, other orders come in. Uh, so uh, then, of course, you can uh, just uh, do the uh, do the send to self, the churning of the coins a little bit more, and that will um, that will uh, help. Uh, of course, uh, in the future, I very much hope uh, from f for full membership proofs. Um, that could uh, that could be even more useful in mitigating this kind of attack. Thank you very much.